Welcome back to the Candy Colored Studio. I'm artist Katrina Berg, and I'm super excited to be joined by another beautiful artist today. And her name is Stephanie Weaver. And for those of you that are listening in podcast land, we are recording right now live um, on Zoom. So you'll be able to see this recording in my YouTube channel. Also, I'll be posting it to Rumble, but you can go to my website, katrinaberg.com, click on podcast, and you'll be able to see gorgeous Stephanie there speaking to you. (laughs) And it'll be really fun. And this is super exciting for me. Welcome, Stephanie. It's so great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I love your podcast. It's always a joy to listen to. And it's just, you know, if, if I can help anybody in your audience, it is just an amazing gift to be part of this and what you do. I'm excited. Absolutely. Well, this is exciting because Stephanie is coming to us from Alabama and I'm in Utah. And so we are just, we are soaking up this good technology, you know, connection and it's really, really awesome. So I just want to kind of give you listeners just a beautiful introduction of Stephanie. So Stephanie, why don't you just tell us anything you want to share today about your background, yourself, your family, where you live, like anything you want to share. So we can get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, So yeah, I'm Stephanie Weaver. I'm based out of Huntsville, Alabama. I've not always lived in Alabama. I've moved moved around quite a bit, Um, you know, Kentucky, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Mississippi. Now I love Alabama, uh, but mostly because of its weather all day. Today we're expecting tornadoes, but um, it's warm down here. I love that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've got a husband, his name is Ben and he's awesome. We've been married 22 years, met in tennis class in college and, uh, still continue to play tennis. That's one of our favorite pastimes. And then we've got two kids, one's 13 and one's 15. So two teenagers about to go through some dramatic hormone shifts. So yay. Oh my gosh. I know it is. It is a crazy ride, isn't it? The teenage thing. Well, it's a good thing you and your husband have tennis. That'll kind of help you move through that. We're, we're kind of the same way. It's, it's a wild ride stuff. <laughs> we have three teenagers right now. So I, I totally get it. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous about the, the driving thing, but you know, he just got his learner's permit and I still haven't let him drive yet. <laughs> Oh, (laughs) you will. You'll totally get there. Um, my daughter, who's my second teenager, we actually went to a, I guess it's a state sponsored thing called zero fatalities last night. And they asked all the kids that have their permit that are going to get their license this year that are taking driver's ed to go to this class. And it, there was some good stuff. Like I learned a couple things that I didn't know because it has been so long since I got my learner's permit and, and license. And I'm like, Oh, this is obviously not just for the teenagers. This was good for the adults too. So it'll be a good journey for you with your son. And I'm sure, I'm sure you'll learn a lot together. It'll be good. Always listening to your podcast. I've been picking up and taking some notes. So zero fatalities. I'll have to see if we have that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I don't know if it's if it's a nationwide thing, but check it out. I mean, I, I thought it was great. And you could just go on, you could probably type in Utah zero fatalities. And mm-hmm. even if you don't have one in Alabama, maybe there's just things in there. Obviously, we should have just about the same loss. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll be helpful for you guys. But yeah. So I guess I, oh, yeah. So, okay. So back, (laughs) I will take squirrel moments, by the way. Um, And I'll just chase a thought. But anyway, so yeah, and I haven't always been an artist. Um, I started out, uh, I went to grad school with a, for an MBA, which is uh, with a concentration in management information systems. So, and then immediately I got a job with IBM where I was an IT specialist and progressed in my career uh, from IT specialist to project manager. And then I managed a team of project managers at ADP where we implemented applicant tracking systems to, uh, for large corporations. And basically that's like, allows you to apply online for a job and then it's integrated with I-9, w, uh, W-9s and all that good stuff, WOTC, all the good things to get somebody actually employed and paid in the company. So my background is very, very technical. And it was about with UPS when I was on the XML online tools team, 
um, which if you purchase anything through Amazon, you're using one of the tools that uh, my team developed. So was, wow. I know it's really neat. So um, cool. Actually, and that's part of like the, the joy I think I get out of everything that I do is I get to be part of making, making something that works for somebody and helps somebody. That's the awesome thing about it. And even in art, it does that. Um, but with, back with UPS, uh, that's when I started oil painting. I mm -hmm. never oil painted prior to that. And um, it quickly became a passion of, you know, how can I do this for a living? because I loved, it was, I loved it. It was my favorite part of every week going to that class. Aww. It, I mean, I, in Atlanta traffic, it would take me 45 minutes to get there and an hour and a half to get back home. Yeah. And I just couldn't wait every week. It was great. And that's the thing that I'm trying to do now for my students is to provide them that outlet of their favorite part of the week, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, of. yes, that is so good. Oh, I love that. So, yeah, obviously, you come from a technical background, you are really good at problem solving, obviously, and making things better for people. And I love that. So, tell us a little bit. So, give us a little more. Um, maybe just tell us about what you love to paint or what you love to create. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. My favorite thing, my favorite subject to paint are animals. Uh -huh. And so and that's kind of where I, I really started growing and finding a business niche. Because, you know, in art, they're always telling you to find a niche. And the yeah. reason why they're trying to, they want you to, to find a niche is because it makes it easier to market. But okay. then you also become very good at that particular subject matter. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was pet portraits. And it didn't start out that way. In the very beginning, I was really interested in painting glass and crystal and doing all the light reflections off of that and very dramatic candlelit scenes. And so I would create all these still life images with fire going on behind it. And I would set up my camera and, you know, get it to click and do all that. And, and so that's what I started with, with um, focusing on kind of on the wine industry. Mm -hmm. and targeting that market but the skill set that I learned from that and creating the glass and and that was a lot of glazing that's why my pet portraits the eyes look so realistic mm -hmm. and so now kind of the evolution that's <laughs> I like to, to paint the wine and the glasses then I went to the pets and now I pretty much focus on pets but it's also bringing in any type of animal into my art. Um, my latest series, I'm working on like six paintings right now of flowers. So just flowers, but I'm like, oh, that didn't feel like me because I'm trying to put in um, this year's color of the year, that uh, very peri color. And I love flowers. I'm creating them very loose. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to add a little mouse in there. Let yes. me just put him in. <laughs> So, so every level have a little mouse in there somewhere because you know that's I like the whimsy of it all you know yeah yeah be serious all the time oh absolutely and I, that I just love how we kind of as artists we feel drawn to paint certain things and then there is a point and I I found that in my career too where I just wanted to take all these series that I had been doing and start combining them and then it just was like an explosion of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think like when you added that mouse, it's like, oh my gosh, that's yes. I wanted to paint flowers, but now I've got a piece of me in here and just, it feels more complete. Doesn't it? It does. It, it feels more you. It feels it's the authentic part. The right? authentic part. You get to put in there. Um, I have dreams sometimes of what I should actually paint and usually an animal is involved in it. Yeah. And for some reason for the last uh, probably about six, six to nine months, I've been focused on little, little mice. And um, I even bought these little lamps, uh, these cute little things. <laughs> so you're <laughs> so I'm going to see these little lights and they're adorable. Aww. And little mice holding lights because I, and I've been about this close going and actually purchasing like a little, a mouse terrarium type thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cats, and that won't work well. So 
<laughs> oh, that's so fun. I love that. Well, I love hearing a little bit more and just, um, for our listeners, just so that, you know, Stephanie, pretty much you're, you're doing mostly oil painting though, right? Like that's your, that's your jam. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Uh, I play with acrylics and watercolor, but I love the feel of oil and the versatility of it. Yeah. You, know, you can change your mind so easily with oils where you can't really do that with watercolor. Oh, well, I think that's, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I do. I did start with watercolor, but I love the versatility of oil paints. And I think it's really important for us to remember that sometimes you have to try lots of mediums. And then when you find one that just really fits, just embrace it. Like Stephanie's done. Like, I think that you'll just find so much more happiness. You don't have to do everything, but I think that that's what I love about your work, Stephanie. It's really clear that what you love and what you love to create and what you want to share and yeah, like, I love your Santa piece that's on your website. I'll have to share that in the, in the show notes. I'll share some of um, Stephanie's latest pieces she's got on her website, but the Santa piece was like super jolly. I'm like, oh, that's so jolly. Such a good, <laughs> such a good piece. Um, so obviously Stephanie kind of, you, you inter, uh, you referred to this idea of having students. And so I want to talk about all these different ways that you're serving your students. But I think one thing that we could do, we had, I actually had a high school student reach out to me a couple of years ago, and she was trying to decide if she was going to go to college and spend a bunch of money on tuition and try to just go more of a traditional route, or if she should just start what, what her options were. And I, and I said, you've actually got lots of options <laughs> and I'm actually going to start including this question with all my, all the people that I interview, not just artists, but anybody that I interview. And so I've been asking this question for a long time, but the, the question was, what kind of advice would you give to creatives finishing high school or even adults wanting to make a career change to be an artist or another type of creative, just basically to follow their heart? So I guess the big question is, should they go into debt to attend um, an art design school? Should they intern at a firm or take workshop from local artists? Should they take online courses or, and just jump into their careers? Like obviously everyone has different suggestions. And that's what I love because I think that whoever's listening is going, their heart's going to say, listen to Stephanie today. She, she knows exactly what, you know, where you are and like her experience is going to validate exactly what you already know to be true. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And then I'd love to talk more about all these students that you have. Okay. That's a lot to unpack. Okay. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. <laughs> so the advice that I've kind of given to some high schoolers is, uh, honestly, I would not recommend going to art school. Mm -hmm. And the reason I wouldn't is because a lot of the, what art school really does well is they teach you all the various techniques and how to apply, how to really kind of get into the studio, maximize your time in the studio and, you know, be the artist part of it. But what I don't think they do a good job of is teaching you the business side of it. Mm -hmm. And if you, most people that go into art school, they have this vision of them being in the studio, working with galleries, having their artwork sold for them so they could just do on the creative side. But the way that the world works for a majority of artists is nowadays anyway, is that you don't have to rely on a gallery to do those jobs for you. You can do all that work on your own and maximize your profit, develop the relationships, not only with uh, companies, but also with uh, the people that you sell to because those, those people that you sell to are gonna become your collectors. They're gonna become your biggest advocates for you. And if you are reliant on a gallery, you're not necessarily going to have those close-knit relationships. So the, the art school, they teach you how to be an artist. They don't teach you how to be a business person. And I actually recommend going to business school and getting your degree in that. And you can double major, you can do a, a major in business and a minor in art. And that way you're getting the best of both worlds in that uh, academic environment. Um, in, a, in that way, because with the art business, I mean, you know this, there's, <laughs> there's a lot to contracts um, and 
you're not going to have a lawyer in the very, very beginning. So you have to be able to really understand what you're getting into and find the resources and, you know, get those relationships with old professors and, <laughs> and go, uh, I got this licensing deal, you know, and, and talk with a law professor. Cause sometimes they'll actually talk with you about that stuff mm -hmm. and be willing to help and, or provide you with resources, what you can go to. And so I always recommend actually going to business school and, mm -hmm. My daughter, for example, you know, she's 13. She has this idea of becoming a pastry chef and interior designer and, you know, and all this. And I'm like, okay, well, the core foundation in between all of those is business. Absolutely. So go for business. And, you know, nobody says that you have to be this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. you're at an age, you're only freaking 13 years old and people are asking you what you want to do. Same thing with 18 year olds, 18. They're asking you, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Yeah. And you've got like another 80 plus years. Why are you limiting yourself so much? Yeah. The, the whole system today really kind of, it bothers me a little bit, but it is what it is. But <laughs> I think, um, regardless business is at the foundation of it all. Um, accounting, licensing, uh, marketing, oh my gosh, marketing, social media, creating your website, getting like your, I was, I was actually showing today we had um, in the art business membership program today was tech talk. So members come with any tech related questions and we discuss them, find best solutions and things like that. And today, one of the topics was about website and the lady had a, um, what she's trying to do is portray her products uh, that she has available with her artwork. And, but it was really busy. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we got into the design of a website. And that's a mixture of both art and business, right? Yes. And, you know, I actually showed her your website. And say, this is, <laughs> it's it's nice it's clean it's well designed you can see lifestyle pictures of your products with your artwork and it was just you know, there is a col uh, a collective understanding of art and design so I think the two going together works really well but I would not I just don't recommend art school. <laughs> no, this is, this is great. This is great. And I, that is such good advice because I think a lot of times for artists, especially, um, they've saved up money to go to school or their parents have saved up money to school, go to school. And they always plan on going. And if for whatever reason, your heart tells you, you need to go to school. I think you're right. You can't go wrong with business school, marketing, advertising, anything like that. Um, there's even some local schools here in Utah, their whole, their whole degree is social media. Is that crazy? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, there's so many, there's so many facets to that. And I think just like you're saying, Stephanie, if you can go and learn one of these things, then when you go to be the artist, you already have so much help behind you. I mean, gosh, somebody out there really needs to go to school for the contracts and stuff. I do have one artist friend that um, went to law school and I think it's helped her a ton because like you were saying, there's lots of parts to our business that we don't necessarily um, think that it's it's not like our go-to when we think of being an artist, right? And like you said, the system doesn't set you up to consider those things first, but they're absolutely vital. If, if you want to take your art and your career in a certain direction, you need to have some resources in there. And so I think, gosh, we almost need to have like a separate little section of your positive painters group that just says, these are your resources. Like this artist went to law school. This artist studied social media, this artist, you know what I'm saying? And you just wow. have somebody that you can go to because the truth is not everybody, not every artist or creative out there is going to be super techie like you, Stephanie. And so they need to say, I need to call Stephanie because she's my tech expert in this particular field. And I know that I can, that she'll send me in the right direction. We can't do everything, but if we have like this network of people to go to, if we kind of have this, like artist or creative network, then I think it would just lift everybody. And so I think, I guess we could just kind of move into your whole positive painters group. But for, for those of you um, listening, it is an art business membership and community that Stephanie started in 2020, right? So it's pretty, are you about a year in now? 
Yeah, I had to redesign the website, I guess it was almost a year ago because yeah. it was just running so slow. <laughs> and so I switched over to Kajabi. Yeah. If anybody who has any questions about Kajabi, I will be glad to talk to you about it. Um, it's, you get what you pay for with this platform and it is awesome. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I was uh, just making another note, network of contacts, because that's kind of something we do in the positive painters. So every seven weeks, uh, we bring in an outside expert to come mm -hmm. in and talk about a specific subject. So we actually had um, Tiffany Staley. Uh, she is actually my lawyer and um, a, re a really good friend. And she has background in photography. So she combines the best of both worlds as well. Yeah. And she came and talked to uh, the community about um, the prioritizing your legal tasks based on your goals. And so she gave us like an outline of everything we needed to do. And uh, we had her last year, the five must do legal tasks for your business. And um, occasionally like she's got a course coming out and um, my crew gets a uh, uh, kind of like, heads up about it. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've got her coming in. And then uh, even next month, we've got a holistic art therapist, cool. um, Stacy Rack. She's going to come talk to us about art journaling. Yeah. And, you know, the, so we bring in um, lots of people about social media. And I like like what you're doing with all the diverse conversations. And so we've had last year, a lady come and talk to us about social media. That, um, in terms of email marketing. And uh, I think it was Instagram was the focus at that point. Mm -hmm. And, but this year we've got, uh, let's see, the big three. She's coming to talk uh, to us about email website and newsletter cohesive communication strategy. Yeah. So yeah, bringing in the business resources because, you know, the truth of it is with us artists, we've got the art side, yes. you know, once, once you're kind of into the business side, you've got the art side down, you know, your style, you know, your voice. And now it's getting those processes those business processes in place so that you can focus on the fun and not mm -hmm. the business side, because the business side is really not that fun. I got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. And there's some of us that geek out about certain aspects of it, but if we have to choose, we would much rather be painting and creating. And so, yeah, I think that's great. So, yeah. So again, just to give them a little bit of an idea. So I want to say that you guys have like a monthly theme, um, right. It's kind of like, if I remember right, you kind of have like, almost like a, a creative challenge that they can do. And then you obviously have people coming in and helping. Is there anything else that you can like tell them about what to expect within the membership, like how it runs? Okay. So we've got, I do things every seven weeks and that just started this year because, um, every seventh week I have a sabbatical. I'm taking many sabbaticals because I find that, um, you know, I'm an artist too. <laughs> <laughs> and I get so focused on helping everybody else that I forget to, you know, yeah. sell my own art. And <laughs> so I take that week just to be completely selfish for me. And um, so every seven weeks, we have a tech talk where bring any questions about technology, we address, address those questions. We have a uh, coffee and create where you show up and it's people from on Zoom and we just paint, draw, talk, whatever we want to do. And that it, it's so much fun because you actually get to see what somebody else is creating and start having those collaborative conversations of, oh, you should do this and this and this. And it's just all the ideas start bouncing and it's so much fun. Um, so we've got the coffee and create the tech talk, and then we've got our lunch and learns where we bring in an outside perspective on the art business or art aspect. And then um, we have the fourth kind, and I'm gonna look at my calendar over here. Uh, let's see, coffee create. Oh, oh, I can't believe I forgot that. Group coaching call. So um, we have a group coaching call where it's myself, uh, Jules McCullough. She's a watercolor digital artist. And then also um, e Eve Stats, 
who is a uh, licensed artist, does a lot of watercolor and also I think a little bit of digital art. Both, all of us are licensed artists and um, you bring in any questions that you have and we have like a hot seat where we'll dive really deep into whatever topic that uh, the community brings to us. And I love that it's the three of us because Eve, um, Eve lives in France and Saudi Arabia. So she brings a very international perspective because, you know, us in the United States, we kind of get like uh, a little bit egocentric of we're everything and, and we're totally not. <laughs> so, so I love it. So <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Oh, that's so good. So yeah, we have those four uh, main meetings and again, they're every seven weeks. So that gives you time in between to actually implement things. And um, all of those are recorded. So if you're not able to come, you can still, you know, listen while you create, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then every month we have um, a art challenge. And so that like this month of February, it is painting something red. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's red. They don't care what it is. You paint something red and you do the hashtag positive painter and you'll get featured on our on our feed. And then I think next month in March, so if you're catching this late, it'll be yellow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so. Cool. Yeah. And what I love about what you're doing, I've taken a few courses on Kajabi. Well, that have been hosted by Kajabi. And mm -hmm. it is super easy to use. And I love that you can go back in and you can re uh, visit certain lessons or topics or conversations. Like you were saying, you record everything. So if you, even if you were there live, how often do you feel like, Oh, I need to go back and remember what Eve said specifically about this particular thing. As so you can go back and rewatch it and you can, I don't know, I think it's really helpful. And it sounds like it makes it really easy for your membership for your members to go in and just re-access things if they have to miss things, because we all have this thing called life that's unexpected. And so it's nice to be able to go catch up on things and not feel like, not feel guilty that you can't do everything that you want to do at that exact time. So I yeah. think that's great. So yeah, definitely. Um, if you're looking for, and it sounds like obviously the community aspect is always good too. And that was going through when you were talking about the, was it coffee and create and everyone starts just helping each other and jumping in. And I love that about our art community in general. Like I've noticed that all over the world, like artists are always so loving and helpful to each other. And I think that that's a bonus that you have with your group as well. So. Yeah. And it's one of those things when I first got started in painting, uh, you know, I was in the corporate world and I didn't really know a lot of artists. And so it was very lonely. And mm -hmm. yeah. I actually made the transition from corporate to art when my husband, um, he got deployed to Afghanistan. And so suddenly, I, and we decided I needed to stay home with the kids. At the time, they were uh, five and seven. And I was really looking for people to connect with because mm -hmm. all I had was my work world. And they didn't understand anything that I was talking about with art or my, my passion for it or what I wanted to do. And, and it was really hard to find people to connect with. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at my local arts art league and things like that. And I didn't necessarily really connect with them because um, it, it's a, it was a very different dynamic than like what I'm experiencing now with you and I and a lot of the members that are in our, my community are like you and I, where we're, we're probably in our forties. Uh, you look younger than that though. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm in my forties. <laughs> I think, I think it's the braid, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm mid, I'm almost, I'm almost mid, <laughs> but go ahead. A little over mid. But yeah. And that it was just, you know, finding those people that were like me, you know, uh, I have a business mind. I have an art mind. Mm -hmm. I have kids. I've got soccer. I've got tennis. I've got all these responsibilities. I don't have time just to sit around and, you know, twiddle my thumbs and talk about art, but I want to talk about art and trying to find that community was so mm -hmm. hard. Yes. Yes. And so eventually I just made it. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of how I felt too, Stephanie. And is it inter- isn't it interesting that so many of us end up doing that? And, yeah. and it's great because then I go on and I see friends that I've you know, connected or met together. And then they solve solutions for, you know, different aspects of our community. And I think it's so beautiful. So thank you for doing that. I think it's great. And I think too, we need to tell them this is not something that I personally think is a huge strength for me, because for me, when people ask me, Oh, do you teach art classes? I'm like, Oh, I don't, but here's some people that do that do a great job. And so I think that's, that's really amazing because not only can you help with uh, the business side of things, the technical side of things, but also you offer online painting classes, like oil painting classes and what some are on like in groups and some are one-on-one. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that? Sure. So yeah, I teach, um, I've got some videos, so they're very self-paced and the beautiful thing about the videos is, I, I don't know, when I, when I watch somebody or I'm like live in a class, I'm like, wait, what color is that? And yeah, <laughs> cause yeah. you're still computing what they just said. And then they, yeah. so anyway, I love the videos and that's what I'm finding a lot of the people like is so that they can watch. And I have the tagline, learn, paint, repeat, Ooh, because you yeah. can take the same class and learn and pick up something different yeah. every time you do it. Um, and I still implement that in everything that I do. Um, I know there's one lady that took my um, color theory course and it's very simplified color theory because color theory is like a huge subject. And in this one, you're painting a little girl holding a color wheel umbrella and using four colors so that you get a good feel for the oil paint and the color mixing. Because I was surprised at how many don't remember you know, the three primary colors and the, yes. the interactions that they have. So it kind of goes back to that. And then talking about the warm and cool colors and everything. Well, anyway, she took this course four times uh-huh. and every time she picked up and learned a little bit, something different, she had to uh, figure out a, a better way to manipulate the mediums. Cause I talk about mediums as well in the ultimate oil painting guide supply list. And you know, how to use the medium because you don't want to use more than 25%. Otherwise it's, it gets goopy and yeah. extra shiny and it does, doesn't work. So, you know, figuring out those things and she's able to do that at a very low price and watch it. <laughs> Cause if yeah. I teach in person, it's like about $150 for that three hours. Yeah. And, you know, my, the, the oil painting videos, uh, the introduction to oil painting, that's only $17.95. Or if you want to do the monthly program, it's uh, $24.50 a month. And you get access to all those. And there's over 30 videos. And I talk about the Zorn palette. Um, you know, purples and pinks are a challenge. So how to use those and create pretty high ranges. Yeah. And anyway, so yeah, I've got that segment. And then there's the group uh, Zoom oil painting class. And that we meet twice a week on Wednesdays from six to nine. um, And then on Fridays from 11 to two. And they just come to whichever ones they want to come to. Yeah. uh, They can come to all of them sometimes, you know, because life happens. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about that is you don't have to lug around all your art supplies. And I've had had some of the ladies that just show up in their pajamas. Oh, it's fine. Nobody. (laughs) Totally. you're fine. <laughs> what are you going to paint? And so they just show up with whatever they want to paint and I help them through the process. Yeah. Because uh, it's everybody has a different style and I encourage them to find their style. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I love your style. It's very Thank light you. and airy and uh, I love your color palette and it's completely different from mine. And I yeah. start. I start out everybody with the same color palette. And once you learn to mix the colors, then experiment, bring in another color. And I talk about how to, you know, create little, I have like a catalog of color play and you just play with colors and see what, what they create. And eventually you're going to come up with your own color palette. And I'm totally fine with that. 
um, some, um, let's see, some of the ladies, they do pet portraits like me. Uh, one of them really wants to do nudes, uh, abstract nudes. And her Instagram is like freaking amazing. I love, Aww. I love watching. And she just started Instagram because of our group. She started it um, last year, but she's now getting more active on it. And she did her first uh, sped up video last night. And uh, I'll have to send you her, her link. It's like uh, Julie Fry. Um, but it's so funny. You can watch that speed up and the cat's just like going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I mean, we, we get really close. Uh, it's a close group and of ladies that just love to paint, love to create. And, you know, the first 30 minutes is always like, chit-chatting and then it gets on the classical music they send me images of what they're working on asking for critique or help or whatever and I bring it up in photoshop and show here's what I would recommend combine this color this color this color if you want this and it's just really interactive and a lot of fun and sometimes I'll will like one of the ladies want to learn how to paint fire I say okay cool well why don't we all just do a group project and I'll um, send you guys the reference image, grab an eight by 10 or 11 by 14, whichever you prefer. And we're gonna paint these candles. And so that's actually a course that's available too, is painting these candles. And I did it two ways. We all did it two ways. We did it traditional method. And then the second iteration was using a palette knife. Oh, nice. So, yeah, cause it's all play. Yes. You know? And if we don't play from time to time, then we'll never go down like a separate little road that might lead us to somewhere really exciting. Right. Yeah. I'm loving the palette knife and I'm trying to find more and more ways to do it because it's not necessarily my style, mm -hmm. but I want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. Oh, I can't wait to see where you go with that. That sounds exciting. Well, let's tell them one more area of of way that you're, you know, just supporting everyone out there. And that would be, you kind of, um, touched on this a little bit about this artist community that you created and connections that you made because you just couldn't find them. And I think two of those friends, you mentioned to me that you've known for what, five years. Yeah. And yeah. then you guys started your own podcast. I want to say just like last summer. And so it's the three of you on there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about this new adventure, what you love most about having your own podcast with friends? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. So, uh, the podcast is called artists soar. It's actually kind of hard to say, so, <laughs> but it's artists soar. So it's like we rise above. Yeah. Um, we were originally art, art BS for business solutions. And that was actually, <laughs> we had a little bit of drama from that because apparently there was another podcast called art and BS. Oh and no. This was actually, you know, bull crap type thing. So, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so there's a little <laughs> bit of drama there. And so we changed our name to, to kind of rise above the drama type thing. And, but it's artist soar. And so it's me, uh, Jules McCullough and Rachel Harshenko and Rachel Harshenko has another podcast called bubbly bibbly, where she talks her and uh, her friend talk about, um, books and the libations that go really well with books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so nice. Really cool. Um, so yeah, each podcast is about 20, 25 minutes. Rachel really re reels us in pretty good and keeps us on point because Julie and I do have a tendency to go after the squirrel moments. We just kind of, uh, <laughs> we have issues. <laughs> no, it, I, I, I'm, I'm all squirrely with you there, Stephanie. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we, um, we talk a lot about, you know, what it is to be an artist and how we try and fulfill the goals that we've set for ourselves and the systems that we've set for ourselves to and then how we deal with certain things like rejection and um you know getting blocked in some way how do we deal with that um overcome you know goal setting the goal setting is the one where rachel really has to reel us in because julie and i both come from project management backgrounds and so that's all about goals like julie even has her own digital planner by jma planner and, um, and she and I both have courses on how to 
basically maximize your time. Actually, next week I have a video with two tips, <laughs> two tips coming out on uh, what you can implement right now to maximize your time and uh, the Pomodoro method and the eat the frog method. So be sure to follow me on Facebook. <laughs> to check awesome. out that but um, yeah, we, you know, keep motivated from working from home was probably one of my, one of my favorites. Um, no, I take that back. One of my favorite episodes that makes me crack up is um, it was about naming your art business. Okay. Because, um, yeah. So Julie, her name is Julie McCullough. And if you were to actually Google that, there's a Growing Pains, uh, the girl from Growing Pains, who is also now a, like a Playboy bunny will come up <laughs> so it's like how do you get past that hurdle to be oh. discovered <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing yeah <laughs> that, was, that was my favorite because and but then that one also the whole conversation led into you know as women artists how do we protect ourselves yeah you know from the, there are so many crazy people out there you know you, you got to worry about your family and do you use your real name? Because one of the ladies in my community, she has a stalker. So that was a real conversation about yeah. what do you name yourself when you need a social media presence? Yeah. And so that one's, that one's definitely my favorite. Oh, my wow. Favorite because it was funny and real, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And the beauty is you have these artist topics or topics that are really geared towards artists and helping artists, but you have three brains working mm -hmm. at this one topic all at once packed into like 20, 25 minutes. So sounds like a bonus to me. <laughs> it is really good. I love, oh. I love that they did that. Um, it was something that we talked about probably about a year and a half and they kept asking me about it. And I'm saying, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying not right now. Yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't at that time. And then the time just came right for all of us and we're okay. I guess we're doing this. Let's do this. And we've been recording one every, well, we've been releasing one every week. We actually record them in batch sessions because usually the first one that we do is a little bit just like awkward. <laughs> yeah, and, and after a while, we kind of loosen up. And by the second one, it's, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. it's a lot of fun. It's like listening to your your friends talk, I think. Yeah, and totally. Fun. Oh, fun. that's so good. Yeah, I think that's so smart. So yeah, and I want to say your episodes come out what Wednesdays? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, awesome. Wednesdays. I okay. Like Wednesdays artists store. Artists <laughs> store and artists plural. So art more than one artist and soar. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Well, I, obviously you're really good at the whole time management thing. You're geeking out about that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that um, artists really do struggle with because it's true. There's so many things that we as creatives, wa creatives want to do, but the reality is there's only 24 hours in the day. So I guess what are some of the hard choices that you've made between tennis and soccer and, and the kids and in the painting? and your students and just giving to this beautiful community that we have, what are some things that you've had to give up to pursue your passions? Yeah. And this, this is a, a, I think a hard topic for me to kind of wrap my brain around because I, I don't feel like I'm giving up anything. That's it, good. It's one of those things like, I know my family is number one priority. Yeah. And it just, for me, it all boils down to priorities. Uh -huh. And we have shared calendars, like my husband and I share our calendar. So I know when his tense matches are, we have the kids soccer games on there and both of them play. And my daughter, she's on the high school and the middle school team. And my son's on the high school team. So we're always going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So having those on our calendars, I know when I can actually play and I'm on three tennis teams. And we just, I don't feel like it's sacrificing a, a tennis match to go see my kids play soccer. Right. You know, and I mm -hmm. work when I do my painting and my work work, which is, you know, the art business, 
that's um, really from like 10 to five. Mm -hmm. And if I have something going on after that, I just, you know, it'll get done. You know, yeah. the, I, I'm the one that's making my schedule yeah. and most of the dates I pick are like arbitrary, you know, maybe I've got a show coming up. Well, do I really need to have this piece done? Mm -hmm. No, I really don't. I can have it there and even sell it as I'm painting on it. You know, there, there's this unnecessary, I think, pressure that we put on ourselves a lot of times that we don't have to. Yeah. Like, Totally. You know, family oh. number one, always. Um, yeah. Oh, I love that. And I think that it's true. I think that that's definitely what works for me to Stephanie. But I think that when we prioritize, then we're getting to do all the things that we really want to. And like you say, you yeah. don't feel like you're giving up things. You don't feel like you're sacrificing because you're focusing on the things that are at the top of your priority list. And then the other thing that I love that you said, when you were talking about the podcast and how they kept saying for a year and a half, Stephanie, this would be so good. You need to do this with us. And you kept saying, I I'm not saying no, but right now the timing's not right. And I think it's okay for for us to say, this is something I would like to do, but in my priority list, it doesn't work right now, but I would love to see mm -hmm. when this could fit. And so sometimes we have to say right now is not good, but later I'll be able to add this to my priority. If it works out, it works out. And obviously the podcast worked out for you three ladies. And I think that that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's hard for artists too, just to be organized. But I think again, when you're organized and you share calendars with your family members, then it's really easy to make those priorities a reality. And, and you're right. Then you don't feel like you're giving up so many things. You're not necessarily losing out or missing out. You're not having that FOMO because yeah. you know exactly what you want to do with your time and who you want to be with. And it's beautiful. Uh, but I'll also say, <laughs> I do, I do make daily choices. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though I have a plan, I, I use this program, it's a, it's a project management program called ClickUp. And it tells me every day what I need to do. Okay. To, because I release two blog posts a month. I uh, publish them to medium.com. I do all these things. And there are still times where I'm like, and for example, last Friday, I did not want to sit in front of the computer, not yeah. even for 25 minutes. I just yeah. didn't want to do it. And instead I painted, I started six paintings. Nice. And I, <laughs> so nice. I painted all day. And now I look at my click up now and I'm like 71 tasks overdue. And I'm like, I know <laughs> I'm not making it up. <laughs> it's 71 tasks overdue. And I'm just like, you know, I don't, do I really need to do one to three Etsy items this month, this week? No, delete. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Cause they're self-imposed things that I put on myself. Totally. And I decided to put my mental health. Yes. By creating ahead of the plan. Yes. And I think that's great. Cause when you want to create a joyful life, you have to curate carefully, right? And you have yeah, to curate okay. based on your mental health. You have to curate based on, like you said, those self-imposed things that we know would be good for our business. But sometimes we have to say, it's not right for this week. If it's good a couple of weeks from now, wonderful. And that's yeah. okay. Yep. So I love that. Yeah. Oh, so many good things that you've shared today, Stephanie. I really, I think that just, we just want to say thank you from oh. myself from everyone getting to hear this great interview as we wrap up, are there any projects or series that you have on the horizon that you're super excited about that you want to tell us about? Well, um, oh my gosh. Uh, there's so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's so we'll just tell you 70 of the 71, right? I'm just kidding. No, no, it's good, Stephanie. It's a good problem to have. Like we never run out of things we want to do. No, I am never bored. I guess never, ever. So um I think what I'm really geeking out about right now is um on my website, I, I've got available a checklist for artists because one of the questions I, I got a lot from the folks that I would coach is um, what are the daily things that I need to do? What are yeah. the daily, monthly, weekly, you know, as, as an art business. So I have that free download 
available nice. on my website, stephanieweaverartist.com. And it's up at the top. You can click on that, enter in your name and email address, and you're going to get, it's actually a video, uh, um, a ebook and the checklist itself. So it's, it's a lot. I, I really stress providing more information because I've gotten so I've downloaded those checklists from other people and I'm just like, this doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> so I'm like, just tell me what do I need to do? And yeah, um, yeah. in the very beginning, you don't know. So I actually really go into detail. Here's what you need to do. And um, and then if you want to dive deeper, that's when you can go into the art business membership program. And I actually teach you how to create your own list cool. so you can maximize your time and get more time in the studio, not at the computer. So oh, yeah. that's the thing that I'm really geeking out about right now is really providing those nuggets of information about time management uh -huh. so you can get more creative time and more time yeah. with your family because that's really why we're doing this we wanted the flexibility to spend with our family and still feel like we're contributing in a financial manner to our family while we pursue what we love so absolutely that's yep. what i'm geeking out about right now art wise i'm geeking out over all my little mouse paintings and i mm -hmm. haven't shared any of them i am so <laughs> bad about sharing my own work um but yeah that i've got three paintings uh, that I'm working on now with little mice in them, their floral arrangements with that peri, uh, very peri color. And then I did, oh, I can share one. Um, oh, good, good. Your YouTubers will see this. <laughs> Yay. So this was, um, I went to that Van Gogh exhibit. Um, we had like a little outing. So everybody that uh, um, is local in Alabama, we met up in uh, Birmingham and we went to the Van Gogh um, immersion exhibit. Mm -hmm. And so I did this little <gasps> oh. Vincent Van Mouse. <laughs> I love it. It's so great. Oh, that's beautiful and so much fun. Yeah, uh, so it's very like unrealistic, but I love it. And oh, I love it. Stephanie, you'll have to send me um, a copy of that and I'll share it in the snow show notes if that's okay. Yeah, Not the snow notes, but the show notes. So Van Gogh mouse, I'm writing that down. Keep going. Sorry. This is Van Mouse. And then I, I'm almost done with the uh, Monet mouse. <gasps> oh my goodness. This is going to be a whole mouse and artist series. It's so silly. But that is it. so great. Okay. Yeah. You might have to send me that one too. Well, it's funny about this one. So I was telling the ladies in my um, group oil painting Zoom class about it. And I was like, I'm debating whether to paint the mouse white because I've got this other painting where the, the mouse is white. And that's where um, our cat Cookie is hanging from a chandelier and the mouse is up above and I've got the animals and they're all like <laughs> revolting against the cats and dogs. And um, so anyway, I was talking about that and I was like, maybe, I, oh, I should paint them like a red hair because Vincent had red hair and they went yeah. like, and then the lady was like, oh, you need to cut off his ear. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'll put my image around his head. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that is so great. I'm so excited to see all of these. That's so fun. Oh, that's exciting. Well, we will be keeping an eye out for all those things. So yeah, I'm just, I guess I, I started making a list of, of links to share in the show, no, show notes and we can go over those, but I guess any events that you have coming up, like, are there any deadlines with like, like, it sounds like a lot of your offerings are things that people can sign up for at any time. Is that right? Or do we need to give them specific dates to sign up for classes or the membership? Yeah, they can actually sign up anytime. So okay. the, the next uh, lunch and learn is on March 3rd and that one's the art journaling as soon as they become a member they're automatically assigned uh, or enrolled in the classes okay so they'll get the notifications uh, with the zoom links and the google calendar link as a reminder and um, so the tech talks the coffee and create lunch and learn group coaching calls they get them all awesome awesome and then are there any like personal like like when are, do you have a date yet that you're going to release these latest mouse marvels or 
do we just need to like get on your email list and pay attention that way? Is that the best way to, and your Facebook, obviously. Yeah. I would recommend following my Facebook or Instagram okay. and okay. it's just Stephanie Weaver artist. Okay, and, cool. Uh, or you can sign up for my email list. I'm, like I said, I'm not very good about showing my own stuff. I know next week, um, myself and four other artists, um, we are going to have a flash sale nice. and we're going to go live on Facebook. And one of the per- very Perry pieces that we've all created yeah. is going to be on sale. So cool. I love that. And I, I'm a big fan of, of Periwinkle. So that'll be very, very good. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of list off the things that I've written. So obviously I will have a link to your website, to your art business membership and community, the positive painters, to your online art classes, the artists or podcast, your Facebook and Instagram, um, your checklist, the, the, checklist for artists, your little downloadable, helpful thing on your website. And then of course I will share some of your latest mouse paintings, which will be really cool. I I am curious. I did take a note on ClickUp. If anyone wants to check out ClickUp, is it just like ClickUp.com? Where do they do that? Just ClickUp.com. Okay. Premium product product. So it's free up until a point. And as far as I could tell, like most artists, they can use it for free. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's really good program. Uh, there's a lot to it. Okay, this is great. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Or <laughs> I know I I gave her lots of things to share, you guys. <laughs> I know I listened. I listened to the, the list. I'm like, uh, sorry, guys. I kind of do a lot, but I I, I do it to really help because yeah. I really want to you know, help that next generation of artists, Mm -hmm. um, anything. And I think the best way actually to do that is to bring a community of, I'm not going to say like-minded, but like-hearted. We Mm -hmm. have the hearts of givers and you bring those people together to build each other up. And that's, that's my vision for our, our group. Oh, Stephanie, that's so great. Like-hearted givers. I'm going to write that down. Um, Thank you so much for everything that you've shared. I love your purpose, your vision, and it's just, it's going to be great to get to know your ladies on your podcast and get to know your community. So thank you again for coming on and for sharing and just wishing you the best in, uh, in your mouse and all your other fun, personal painting series. And yeah. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. It was such a joy. (laughs) <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, sending so much love from Stephanie in Alabama and myself in Utah and lots of love from the candy colored studio. Have a great day. Goodbye. Bye.